Through this vigil tonight, through us coming together here tonight, we're really hoping to raise awareness about the injustices and severity of the injustices that the Hazara people continue to experience in Afghanistan. Demand that the Australian government and the international community recognize this as injustice um, and take accountability for the actions that we have had and what role we have played in the last 20 years as a nation in, what, in what's going on in Afghanistan right now. Something very far away happening in Afghanistan, there is a lot more we can do right here in Australia right now. There are more than 5,000 5, Hazaras suffering on temporary protection visas. Their suffrage goes unnoticed, their pain and their grief goes, uh, go unnoticed and we do want tonight to raise awareness on their plight and also advocate for um, granting permanent protection to those who are um, suffering on temporary protection visas and chef visas. We want to bring attention to uh, the unreasonable delay of uh, family unification applications for several years. Attacks like these could be a death sentence to a family member of a community member here any time. We also want to ask for a lifting of the ban on resettlement of refugees in Indonesia. There are around 10,000 refugees from Afghanistan, mostly from the Hazara community, stuck in limbo in Indonesia, unable to come to Australia or go anywhere else to make, to make their home. Um, to share your pain at these atrocities that yet again we're here to acknowledge that have been occurring in Afghanistan, but also not just to bear silent witness, but to speak up. These are blatant attacks on Hazaras and Shia Muslims in Afghanistan by extreme radical elements. They have not been stopped, they have not been condemned by the Taliban, the purported government. They're disgusting and inhuman acts, and we've already heard so powerfully. These are not political statements, these are targeted and systemic acts of murder. Targeted for mass outrage at the most vulnerable citizens. School children. School children in a school, one of the best schools in Afghanistan that teaches 30,000 students. Attacks on people simply worshipping their God in the way that they choose at the mosque. Or indeed, it's two years now since the atrocity of murdering pregnant mothers and mothers who'd just given birth to their own children. It's even more appalling that this is being done in the name of religion. This is the furthest thing from religion. It's perverse, it's inhuman, and it perverts the true message of Islam and all world religions that within their doctrines also preach peace. True religions don't preach murder. They don't encourage or condemn murder like this. I just want to read you an email that I received actually only a few hours ago. Since the fall of Kabul, um, many people here I've already spoken to um, and helped. My office and myself have done my very best to help literally thousands of people worried about family and friends. And every morning when I look at my emails, there are some more emails every, every morning from people in Afghanistan waiting for visas um, that have a connection with Australia. We can't help them all. But I read this email only a couple of hours ago and I just want to read these words because they sum, they sum it up. We are Hazara and Shiite people of Afghanistan and we're in a very bad situation. I lost my father a few months ago and I'm worried about the rest of the family. I used to work with the police and I've been threatened by the Taliban since the fall of Kabul and now we just try and hide. They've killed and will kill our people for years. The Taliban have also issued an official written statement that widows and young girls should be forced to marry the Taliban and young boys should go to war with the Taliban. I was worried about my three young sisters and my widowed mother, and I'm worried about myself and my brother. My fiance is in Australia, here in Dandenong, and I've been sponsored for a partner visa. We also applied for humanitarian visas for our family, but there is no response from the Australian government. Please help us process our visas and save our lives. The Taliban will kill us. Last week, more than 100 Hazara and Shiite students killed and injured in Western Kabul, near our house. To whom should we take refuge? Who should we ask for help? 
How do we breathe? How do we survive? They kill us every day just for being Hazaras and Shiites. We don't know the true number of victims from these latest atrocities or indeed over the last two years because the Taliban will not allow any honest reporting. So we only know what we hear from family and friends. But I just want to make three final points. I had not intended Shabnam to talk or even mention the election. This is not, in my view, a political occasion. Um, so I'll just respond to the points in that sense that you made. With regard to the genocide warning, I would note that your words, they're right. These killings now are systemic and they're targeted. They were not part of the conflict that the Taliban sought and perpetrated to take control of the country. The United States Holocaust Memorial Museum has now published a statement warning of the serious risk of genocide and crimes against humanity against the Hazaras. And I do believe that the next government of Australia, whether that's my side of politics with the great privilege of forming government or the current government, that's a matter for the people to decide in a few weeks, but that the next government of Australia needs to restore some of our moral standing in the world and speak up louder and more firmly and work with other nations on these issues and call out these acts. Um, I also acknowledge that the impact on so many people here in our community is made worse because of the delays in visa processing that this email I got just this afternoon refers to. The truth is, this has been a deliberate act of discrimination. For partner visas, which you referred to, Shabnam, it takes on average, on average, about 48 months for someone from Afghanistan to get a visa for their husband or wife. If your husband or wife or loved one is from America or Germany, it takes five to seven months. That is discrimination by the current government. I feel so strongly about that, and I know many people here are waiting to see their, life, their wives and their husbands and have missed their own children growing up. That is not acceptable in this country. I also know that near zero of the thousands of visas that have been promised by the government for humanitarian visas have been processed, and indeed they have not even typed half of the applications into the computer in six months. We need more resources, whoever the next government is, to actually treat people decently and do the job of the government. Not everyone is gonna get a humanitarian visa. We know that, everyone here knows that. But we need to, to do the right thing and at least respond to people's cries for help. The final thing, to acknowledge your questions, a federal Labor government will grant permanent refugees permanent protection. There's no place in our country for TPVs or chefs. If you're a genuine, or genuine refugee, you should have permanent protection and be able to build your life in this country. We need to, thank you, we need to clear the backlog of asylum seekers and again let genuine refugees stay in this country. We need to end the discrimination and treat people fairly. That doesn't mean everyone will receive Australia's protection, but we can do a lot better than we have been doing in recent years. So I thank you, I stand with you. I'm proud to represent this community and I congratulate the organisers. We need to speak up more loudly, both across the country and across the world. We've heard much of uh, the mass killings, the crimes against humanity in Ukraine that appear to be perpetrated by Russia, and we need to hear more about what's going on in Afghanistan, Afghanistan to the Hazara people. Thank you so much. When first running as a Greens candidate 12 years ago for the state seat of Dandenong, I learned so much about the Hazara people. Their struggles here in Australia, their struggles getting to Australia, and most importantly, the horror of what they were fleeing from. The reason I've stayed in the Greens and been a local councillor and been a state election candidate and now a federal election candidate is been because of the Greens' uncompromising support for people seeking asylum. For a fair system for assessing people seeking asylum claims, for supporting a very large intake into Australia, for making sure that those who are waiting for asylum complete support for very quick processing and for proper humanitarian support. Not wanting to see what has happened for over the last decade, people seeking asylum, living in poverty in Australia, taking years for their claims to be assessed. 
for this, but to go back to this attack last week, I know full well from talking to so many Asara community members over the last 12 years that this is not, this murderous attack has not happened in isolation. It's another chapter in the continued genocide of the Azara people. Over the last century and a half, this, these attacks are systemic, targeted and continual. It was 12 years ago that a young Azara woman invited me to an art gallery in central Melbourne. It was an art exhibition of young Hazara artists from Afghanistan and Pakistan. And what struck me was that these were not paintings of hope and optimism. They were paintings that showed the violence, the trauma, the chaotic environment experienced by the youth of, As of Asara for Afghanistan, in Afghanistan and Pakistan, and then the trauma experienced here as they waited for their claims to be assessed. I bought one of those paintings. It's on the wall of one of my rooms. I see it every day. I see it when I'm playing with my children. I see their happiness in being the fortune of actually living in such a great country. And I see that painting and that reminds me of the hardship that you've experienced. As Green Senator Janet Rice said of similar attacks last year, those who carry out these crimes must be held accountable. But we also want, and to echo what Shabnam said, we want the Australian government to increase the humanitarian intake quota in our refugee program so that there is more available places for Asari refugees fleeing this violence. Or as Green Senator Nick McKim has said, there is a moral imperative for the Australian government to help the Azara people in their hour of need. As a representative of the Greens, and I acknowledge here tonight Greens Councillor Rhonda Garrard, I commit to you to the continued support of the Greens for the Azara people. Support that has come from our elected senators of the Australian Parliament over the last decades support that will continue to come support for australia to be a, a better global citizen for to continue to speak up for the greens have been relentless in that against such attacks and attempts against unfairness for the treatment of the asara community here but that painting and i want to go back to that painting that painting that reminds me of your struggle that has reminded me also of something positive of what I've seen over the last 12 years. First as an election candidate, then as a Greens councillor for the city of Greater Dandenong for eight years, and what I still see now, the strength, the resilience, the courage of the Azara people. I see that tonight with all of you standing here in solidarity, and I stand with you. Thank you.